Hey guys, welcome to episode 135 here with the False Nine podcast. It's just me. It might be like this for a while. Um, but anyways, we had an exciting weekend. Uh, we had Canelo, we had UFC, we had one champion, one championship. Uh, and we're going to get right into it. We're going to basically recap whatever happened this weekend. A lot of exciting stuff. I want to say it's exciting because it was not boring but it's weird it's a lot to take in and, and moving parts confusing i want to talk about it but i do want to just say that i did watch one championship on friday night demarcus demetrius johnson um he fought adriano uh, I, f- I forgot his last name um but it, it was a good fight uh i was the other guy the adrian guy adrian or adriano he was like kind of it felt like he was running away he got a few clean shots on demetrius but i think demetrius is just he's just too good he's goaded um i wish he was in the ufc to be honest that he he would be he would be a lot of fun in the ufc so uh and the fight before they it was a muay thai fight and they gave this guy uh oh that guy that they gave him a standing ovation in colorado or was it Arizona? I don't know. I think it was in Colorado, Arizona, one of those states where they had the event and they were just like chanting his name, clapping. He didn't know how to react. And it was so cool to see because there's like a language barrier and he wants to like, you can tell that like he's super appreciated and he wants to be like, thank you. Like, I appreciate it so much, but he can't really say that, but you can just see it from how he's reacting very humble. And it's like, a, uh, I guess like how he, what he said about it. Sorry, guys. What he was saying about it was just like, you know, he he was like, you know, living in the streets, you know, just very poor growing up. And now he has this opportunity. People are trying his name. He, he was just like in, in awe. And he was gifted like 100 G's, um, which was crazy. And I was like, damn, that's a lot of money. So happy for him. And I think it's cool. Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to watch more of these other promotions or organizations. I know last week uh, I saw Bare Knuckle. Uh, boxing with my girlfriend and then this week is one championship uh, boxing as well in general so i'm trying to keep up i need to start watching some bellator when that starts that's like you know they got their events coming out just so i can talk about these things because there's a lot of good fights a lot of good fighters to talk about and it's just like super entertaining and i, and I love watching the sport um so yeah friday friday night was cool i was just playing rocket league and just watching the fights so that was exciting um it's pretty interesting how one championship does it they they have like jujitsu they have muay thai they have mma i guess a style of fighting which is really really cool to see they have a little bit of of everything for everybody um so that was friday night and then saturday night we have ufc 288 and then we have canelo versus john Ryder. um and I want to start off with the Canelo fight. Uh, I want to start off by talking about how a lot of people are saying, like, oh, is this a decline of Canelo? Or is he slowing down? Things like that. And I was really annoyed because I was like, bro, Les, when he just beat Triple G, everyone was like, this is him. You know, he's on top of the world. This is a nab, blah, blah, blah. And I get it. People wanted to see him knock out John Ryder. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, um, Canelo even said, like, if if I lose to John Ryder, like, I'm going to retire. And he's basically saying, like, if I lose this guy, like, I shouldn't even be competing. And they went 12 rounds, and it's just, oh, wait, is, is Canelo slowing down or, or what's going on? And honestly, I mean, they they were fighting, I think, um, I think it's 500 feet above sea level. So they're going to get more tired, naturally. So they're at 500 feet above sea level. So they're already fighting like in a different environment where they're going to get more tired. And Canelo has a history of of getting tired in the later rounds. Like it's just he doesn't have a lot of gas in the tank. Um, and he's just always been like that, you know, and that's just how it is. He always just slows down and, and there's nothing wrong with it. You know, some fighters got got it and some don't where they can just keep up the pace all 12 rounds. Um, and Canelo fights at a crazy pace and, and he just tends to get tired, just slows down. There's some opening stuff like that, especially if he's getting hit, he just starts to slow down more. But, um, I mean, think about it guys. Like John Ryder is going into Canelo's house, his backyard, all Mexicans. And you know this when you sign the contract, you know, when they bring you the fight. So if I'm John Ryder, I'm like, bro, I'm going to fuck you up in your own house. Like, I'm getting the bag, duh, like, it's cool, but I'm not going to sit there and just be whatever. Like, if I have this dream to be a boxer, now I got uh, the opportunity to fight the best boxer in the world in his own backyard. Can you just imagine if I just go in there and, and just 
get the win. Like, just go in there and get the win. Like, what it does for his career and what it does for those sports of boxing. Like, the rematch, going to sell a lot. The rematch is going to be crazy. It is just, you just have a new storyline. And, and John Ryder just is, is the guy who beats Canelo. Like, that's him. And, and he does it in his own backyard. Like, that's crazy. So, imagine how hard he trained. Imagine how hard he had to dig in there. To stay in the fight because his nose was broken. He couldn't breathe out his nose. He just had to breathe out uh, his no- uh, his mouth after his nose got broken. I forgot what round it was. But he got knocked down, I think, twice or three times. And one of those, his nose just broke. He stopped breathing. You know, he had to use his mouth. So can you imagine how hard like he had to like mentally fight with himself just not to give up and to keep going and to get up when he got knocked down and just to fight? Like, so when people are saying, oh, blah, blah, I'm like, bro, if I'm John Ryder, like, I'm like, man, like, he did, he almost pulled it off, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, like, kudos to him, like, he got his opportunity, and he almost, almost completely finished the mission. I think he got the job done, but he almost finished the mission, and then not to, like, hit on Canelo, I love Canelo, I'm a big Canelo fan, but I also love it when, like, a guy just comes in, and he's ready. And he wants to make a name for himself. And that's what John Ryder did. And he and he made a name for himself. There's a lot of boxers that do this. This happened to Pitbull Cruz when we had to Javante Davis. He stayed in there that whole fight on a like two week notice, you know, and, and that's what's so impressive. And that's why we fall in love with these boxers because they show that heart and, and they go in there and they put out a performance and you're like, wow, you know, and and next thing you know, John, whatever John Ryder does after this, like if he keeps it up, like he's going to get more attention and he's going to just make more money. And that's good for him. He did what he had to do. Um, the fight was good. It was, I mean, nobody expected to go all 12 rounds. I don't know how John Ryder did it. I really don't. He got hit so hard so many times. But he threw and he was active the whole time. Canelo got a little beat up on his face. and But that's one thing that I do love about Canelo. Like he's not gonna run away he's not scared he's gonna get hit and he's gonna throw back and and i love seeing that i love seeing that from canelo and it's so cool to see you know you always want to see a guy just boom hit back you know and then they're just throwing punches back and forth um but i think canelo won i don't think it was like a um it was a dominant performance i think it was pretty clear that he won but it wasn't like his his best performance but there's nothing wrong with that like he 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 fought somebody in his backyard and and that's the that's a danger with fighting in your backyard, and I don't blame him for not doing that so many times because you go in there, some guys are going to get highly motivated, and they want to go crazy. And, and, I mean, John Ryder almost pulled it off again, so that's that. Um, Canelo, he has Bavol next. Uh, he's going to get ready for that. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I don't think he needs to go up and, and, and beat Bavol, to be honest with you. I think he, uh, I think he should fight Benavides next. I know I was really opposed to that fight for a long time, but now that he beat Caleb Plant the way he did it, I was like, he needs to fight Canelo. Like, it's just a really exciting fight. And Canelo's not getting any younger. But then again, uh, I mean, I don't know. He wants to fight Bavol. In, and I don't blame him. He lost against him. And kudos for him to him for not, like, just running it back. I believe he he went to Triple G, and then he went. he's going to go to uh He had this fight, now he's going to go to Bavol. So, um, and, and Bavol... And Canelo says that everybody knows, you know, I want to fight Bavol and, and at 175 with the same terms, same rules, same everything. And um, and and Bavol saying, like, why not do it at 168 where I can become undisputed, undisputed, you know, champion, all the belts, blah, 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 all this stuff. Right. And uh, and, you, and I love Canelo, but you got to ask the question, does Canelo want to fight at 175 because he doesn't want to risk the chance of losing the belts at 168? Or he um, he really just wants to prove to himself and to the world that he is, like, the best guy at, at that weight class, too. So, I don't know. Who knows? But either way, when that fight comes, um, it's going to be really hard for Canelo to win. If he's smart, he can pull it off because, um, I mean, I know I understood that Bavol is bigger, but Canelo is just a lot more skillful. Um, but And I think Canelo can get the job done, but we'll see. When that time comes, we'll talk more about the fight. So, you know, that's that. Um, overall... I liked the fight. I thought it was pretty cool for him to come back home and fight. Um, and, I mean, like, he had, like, a whole bunch of mariachis. It was a lot. I think it was, like, 80. I don't know. But his uh, walkout was awesome. You know, all that stuff was cool at the stadium. So, a really good day for the Mexican people that got to experience that. I wish I was there. But it's all good. Um, let's talk about UFC now. Um, we had, 
I actually didn't get to watch much of the UFC fights. I wanted to watch all of them. But watching the Canelo fight, and I'm happy that the Canelo fight happened a little bit before the main fights of the UFC. Well, really just like the main one. So that's why I was just like, you know what, I'll just watch the Canelo fight and, and just watch the main the main fight or whatever else we get to watch because the Canelo fight started pretty early. So Gilbert Burns and Bilal Muhammad fought. I didn't really watch that fight at all. I, well, I, was ha- I had it on my phone, but I didn't really watch it. But apparently uh, Gilbert Burns, uh, he tore his left shoulder and um, since round one, and then he fought the rest of the fight like that. Um so with that and i've seen some highlights of the fight with that being said like i don't think bell muhammad is that guy you know and, and like i said i like the guy you know I, I like his character i've seen him on a podcast interviews i've seen him fight i like him you know but he is not uh i don't think he's that good good enough at least he fought like the worst version of gilbert burns and like i think kind of just uh, he didn't put him away but uh and it's hard to put away someone like Gilbert Burns, but you know when uh, I I would just think if someone's fighting with only one side of one arm or one side of their body, it should be like a pure dominance and it's almost a finish. So I don't know. Gilbert Burns had three fights in like less than a year. It's like a hundred some days. It's a crazy stat. I mean, he fought three weeks ago against Jorge Masvidal, um, and the fights are probably not as damaging, but it's just a training cap. Just training camp just putting so much damage to your body i couldn't imagine just like you know for that injury to happen i'm almost not surprised because i'm like bro you've been fighting and training for like so long just consistently back to back to back and you put yourself at that risk where you know injuries can happen especially after a weight cut you know it can get really just tricky so uh it kind of sucks because i wanted to see gilbert burns you know i think he with with what I saw, I think the best, like the mid or somewhat best version of Gilbert Burns, he would have definitely beat Bell Muhammad. And I really hope Dana White in the UFC gives uh, Gilbert Burns another chance to to prove himself to another title shot because I think he can pull it off. Because if not, we we could be pretty close to the end of uh, Gilbert Burns' career. And um, I, I just want to see him with the belt. I'm just a fan. So... Uh, I don't think Bell Muhammad uh, stands a chance with either Leon Edwards or Kobe Covington. Um, and I say that respectfully. I think standing up, you know, Leon's, he's going to get to him. Kobe's definitely going to get to him, especially with the with the wrestling. So, I mean, we'll have Leon and Kobe. And I think, uh, you, honestly, I think you'll see, like, two two fights of that or three, possibly. So, uh that was really disappointing. It was really disappointing because, again, I wanted to see Gilbert Burns to win. So I was really upset about that. But, I mean, like, there's really nothing much you can do about it. So on to the the main event. Oh, man, this fight right here. This fight had everything but fight, to be honest with you. A lot of drama, a lot of bullshit, a lot of this, a lot of that. But the fight itself, I mean... Uh, I don't know. It, it just didn't seem like a very active fight, like where they were swinging um, and getting hit a lot. I know Henry got hit a few times, but um, I was really disappointed, like from from Aljo and and I want to like Aljo Aljamain Sterling, like I really do. But I mean the the fight overall. I mean, like I said, it, it, it had a lot, but but fight. You know, I didn't see a lot of aggression from either fighter. I see more frustration from Henry because he couldn't get the job done. He was trying to do certain things, and you could tell that he wasn't. He was just too short, uh, not long enough to get to to Aljo, and and you could tell he didn't want to get close enough. But then he realized he could get close enough, and at that point, it was almost kind of too late. Um, you're kind of tired. You're kind of a little bit beat up. So it, it was just tough. That was just my opinion. Um, Aljo, in my opinion, didn't fight to win that fight at all. Um, I didn't see. Obviously, he's not going to risk it. He's a champion. I understand that. But um, I, I don't know. Like Aljo, it's so hard to like him. And I say that in a really nice way. And I really hope there's a lot of people that can relate to me. Um, it's really hard to like him because... You know, he's the champion, but it just, he doesn't show that. Like, he doesn't show, like, skillful-wise. Like, he's really good. He's really good. He's good. He's really good. Like, he's a, he's really great. He's a champion for a reason. He beat Henry Cejudo. Um, you know, 
and he's beating uh, uh, what's his name, Peter Yan. I don't really count T.J. Dillashaw. So I mean, he's good. Like he's good. Like he's he's high, right, but it's just so hard not to like him. You know, first he does that stun with the belt, and then uh, you know T.J.'s hurt, and he's kind of like bragging about it. Like you know, he's talking shit about it, and it's just like, bro, like you really like just. I don't know, like, I feel like if he was just honest about it, like, hey, you know, I kind of fucked up with the whole belt thing, uh, and then the TJ Dillashaw, like, it, and if he would speak about it, like, yeah, I get that, but I'm still the champion, I'm here, I beat Henry Cejudo, like, I'm the champion now, you know, I wish he was like that, you know, like, he's just honest about it, you know, but when he's fighting Henry, you could tell, like, he he's kind of like, uh, not scared, but he just doesn't want to risk it. And and, and you want to see that from a champion. You want to see, like, you know, I'm the champion. Like, I'm here, like, and, and, and like, I'm going to let you know that. And he, he hasn't had any championship performances. You know, I think his best performance was against Peter Yon the second time. But, um, I mean, this performance was just sloppy. It was a controversial win. You know, there was a judge that gave uh, uh, Aldrew the fifth round. And it was, to me, clearly, as a fan, too, I don't know. I haven't watched the fight again. Um, it looked like Henry run the fifth. And the only reason I think why a lot of people think that Henry won is because he was the aggressor. You know, he was the one chasing. Aljo, well, you could, I mean, the fifth round, he was just going in circles the whole, the starting, the beginning of the round. Like, that was his game plan. Like, he going in there and to not, you know, fucking get, to get beat up or to get tapped. And, and that's just annoying. Like, you know, you want to see your champion go in there and really defend his belt. Not like, hey, if you can catch me, you can get it. Like, all right, here's my belt. Like, what's up? Like, you going to take it away from me? Like, let's fight then. You know, I don't know. You just want to see that from a champion. You really do. And it's so disappointing because, like, the dude, he's been in these weird situations. And then he brags about it. I'm like, bro, you didn't really win, though. And then... um you go into certain fights and you put in, in like in that fifth round and, and you're just starting to run for like the first minute. And it's like, bro, it's a really tight fight. Like, how are you going to go in the fifth round running? Like, and I don't know, it's just weird. And and again, like, I want to like Aljo. He seems like a cool guy. He seems very skillful. Like, he knows what he's doing on the ground, standing up. I mean, he had amazing kicks. He had some good defense, and it was scary because, you know, you, he, he would kind of get behind Henry and almost had the whole back, and, you know, that's where, you know, you start to see some threat, and it's like, oh, snap, he might do something here. So that was a little scary, but, again, never really showed, like, pure dominance, or he never put Henry in trouble. Um, nobody was ever in trouble in that fight, and that was super annoying to, like, see. Again, Henry did the best he could. The dude is shorter. His arms are shorter. His legs are shorter. He just couldn't get to Aljo. And I think he should have been a lot more aggressive in the beginning of the fight because Aljo, he, he wasn't countering. He wasn't, like, he wasn't dangerous to me. Like, you know, where you see some guy, like, you get a little close and just show something or he throws something. And you're like, oh, snap, like, keep your distance. You know, if anything, Henry got closer, closer, closer throughout the whole fight. And that's when he started to get real comfortable. But at that point, he was either it was too late and he was just too tired. So that's my thoughts about the fights. Uh, I mean, that fight specifically. Um, again, I think Henry won. I think a lot of more people would have been satisfied if Henry won. And it's not just a hate on Aljo. But, you know, you want to see your guy, your champion, you know, whether whatever weight class he's in, you want to see him you know, dominate, you want to see him, like, that's why he's the champion, you know, um, and I understand, like, you know, you're fighting championship rounds, you don't want to lose rounds, but you also got to win, like, without doubts, you know, like, don't, don't leave it up to the judges, leave it up, like, nice and clear that you're the winner, and you're the champion, and I'm sure there's a lot more strikes that landed on Henry, and and there's a really good reason why Aljo won. I'm pretty sure there's a really good reason why he won. Like, you know, on paper and 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 really just in general. I'm sure he probably did win. But, um, you know, watching it live, I thought Henry won. And I would have been more satisfied if Henry won. And I would have loved to see it run it back if Henry would have won. You know, because it was a really close fight. So, you know, and, and, then, um, and then he gets booed in his own home. You know, and, and not to, like, be mean or anything, but that guy just that just has to tell you something about uh, Aljamain, you know, like, 
to get booed in your own backyard. Like, why do people not like you? You know, why do they not support you? You know, as a fan, the only thing I can think of, like, you're boring, you're not entertaining. You know, that's why they're like, boo, boring fight. This is so lame. Like, you fought here in your own backyard, and this is what we got. And I understand that. Like, you want, you're want you supporting this guy, and he's the main event. You know, you want to see fire. You want to see him perform. And he didn't. That's why people were booing him. Like, you know, like, you, if I'm going to go see Canelo and Guadalajara Jalisco, like, I want, again, you know, people want to go see him knock somebody out. Like, you're fighting in your own backyard. You want, And that's why a lot of people are upset. And same thing with the whole Aljamain thing. Like, that's why people are, were booing him. And But this is not his first, uh, like, you know, most of his fights are like this. He's not an exciting fighter. So, you know, and it sucks when you have a champion that's not exciting. So, but, I mean, um, I mean, Aljamain's going to fight Sugar Sean. If Sugar Sean can figure out how to avoid, you know, the, the ground game, I think he wins easily. He's longer, or he's longer than Henry. Um, he so he has reach. He can kick you. He can punch you. Um, but he just has to defend those takedowns, especially against a big guy like Aljo. I mean, we saw we saw Sean O'Malley get taken down by Peter Yan a few times and didn't look so good. So that's going to possibly happen. I'm really interested to see how Aljo adjusts to that because, I mean, if they fight, like, in August or September or even October, like, Aljo's not one of those guys who likes to fight. And you can tell, you know, it's because of his weight cut. His weight cut's too brutal. So it's going to be really interesting how he goes into that fight. I think he's going to go into this fight uh, against Sugar. Uh, honestly, like, less uh, less prepared i think more drained more exhausted especially after this training camp and then in a few months you gotta get ready for another one um so you know and sugar sean has been resting and getting ready so he's gonna be 100 percent. aljo's not so you you know it's seeing those differences is going to be really interesting um last night or not well, last two nights ago you know during the fight uh henry was really unsure in the press conference you could tell that like, he was not too happy with himself and just really upset and bothered with the outcome of the fight you know because i think he realized that maybe he's not as good as he thought he was anymore and then you know just just not to get the win is really upsetting too in general so i think those two things were really bothering him that night um but i mean i want to see him fight as a fan um that was my first time watching him fight and I think he's really good. I think he needs to keep fighting. I understand as a competitor, you only want to fight to be the best. You don't want to just fight to fight. And as a family and things, I completely understand. But as a fan, you know, you want to see it. Um, he called out Marab, which is uh, Aljamain's teammate. So if that fight happens, that would be exciting too. And I think that fight makes sense. You know, and, and that honestly works out for Marab because, you know, um, he did, he can't find nobody else. Like he can't find nobody else because that's who Aljamain's finding. So he he'll fight Henry Cejudo, and I think Henry Cejudo beats him up, and then he's right back into a title shot. Like if I'm being real, so we'll see. It'll be really interesting to see if if Sugar Sean gets the job done, and then Henry beats Marab, and then you got Henry and Sugar Sean at it. That would be a crazy fight, honestly. That would be so cool to see. So. Um, but I would love to see Marab and Henry Cejudo just because of the size and, and both of them are really good. I think Marab is, is better than Aljamain Sterling, if I'm being honest. So I think it's going to be a, it'll be a better matchup for Henry. I don't know if it's going to be easier or harder, but it's going to be a better matchup. He'll be able to show more of what he can do. So that's going to be cool and exciting. Um, I know the last thing the last thing I was going to say, Brandon Moreno told uh, mentioned that, you know, going at it with Henry Cejudo at uh was it uh 135 i think or one yeah 135 for no bell it's just a fight and i thought that was pretty interesting that would be a good fight too because brandon moreno doesn't really have much there's a good opponents out there i know he's fighting again so it'll be cool for him to fight henry cejudo but i think henry cejudo i mean he wants to want to fight and then fight for the belt and then fight for another belt again he wants to become double champ again he wants to just do it all over again and i don't blame him that's what he wants to do amazing so that was his weekend. Um, again, really interesting, uh, really weird. So uh, we'll see, you know, kind of what's next for the UFC. I think not that it was boring, but it just wasn't as entertaining this weekend with the UFC. And that was kind of just like, you know, it kind of sucked. But, I mean, you had a few fights, you know, fall apart. The Charles fight, 
and there's a few more on the undercard that fell off. I know there's that guy, Diego Lopez, I think, that's made a pretty impressive performance. So shout out to that guy. Um, and I like his haircut, so that's pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, we have Devin Haney and Lomachenko this weekend, so that's really exciting. We'll be talking about that on Thursday or, or Friday for you guys. So, yeah. So, guys, if you're watching, I just want to say I appreciate it or listening. I appreciate it, too. Um we've been growing you know we got the clip channel we got the main channel i've been posting on both and we've been growing so i really appreciate that so thank you for watching thank you for listening and, and, and all the support you do and i think the support is watching listening and liking and all that stuff so thank you so much it's been really uh interesting and difficult for the false nine lately so we're just trying to adjust and and get uh get to the point where i or whoever um can put the best content out to you know entertain you guys and, and just show you guys a good time so i'll see you guys on friday i hope you guys have a great rest of the week and um just have fun and and stay tuned peace